Hey sugar geeks, Liz here. So you guys have seen me make sourdough donuts, classic fried cake donuts, but what about baked donuts? I'm gonna show you how to make a super easy baked donut with colored glaze coming up next on the Sugar Geek Show. Okay, time to make our baked donuts. Ironically, this is actually my white velvet cake recipe that I've tweaked just a little bit to be donut batter, but if you think about it, a donut is like a cakey consistency, and we're using a pan to make the donut shape, so why not just use a really delicious cake recipe? So that just might have made like an explosion go off in your mind. I know it, it made one go off in my mind when I heard that. You could probably turn any cake recipe into a donut recipe. The main difference is the mixing. It's way easier, like so easy. It's like combine these ingredients, add these ingredients, and now you have donuts. So. I'm gonna show you how to make a super simple, just kind of like base cake donut recipe that's baked and not fried, and then we'll talk about how to make it your own. All right, let's get going. So I already have my oven set to 450 degrees because we want that baby hot. We're not frying these donuts, but we still want them to get that really nice puff in the oven when they first go in there. I'm gonna put my sugar in my bowl with some melted unsalted butter. Notice I don't have any sort of mixing machine out. It's just my hand. We're just gonna whisk this up. And then we're gonna add in our room temperature egg. It actually probably doesn't even need to be room temperature, but we, we play things on the safe side here by making sure everything is room temperature or just a little bit warm so that everything combines together. When something's cold and another thing is not cold, they don't like to mix, so even though it's a simple mixing method, we wanna make sure they actually mix. Now I add in the oil. This is just gonna keep them nice and moist and a little bit of vanilla. You can switch that vanilla out for any type of flavoring you like. Mmm, smells really good. Okay, now we're gonna take our regular AP flour, not cake flour, baking powder, little bit of baking soda, nutmeg, key to that cake donut flavor, but if you are changing this recipe, you wanna change this spice to something that accents the flavors. So if you're doing like a lemon rosemary, you might wanna take out the nutmeg altogether, um, maybe do some lemon zest, or if you're doing like a pumpkin donut, maybe do pumpkin spice instead of nutmeg. So this is something you wanna change. Salt, and just give that a little whisk just to combine it. Not super, this is not a whisk. Whisk with your spatula. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna just take half of this flour, put it in there like so. Just mix that up. Okay, and then we're gonna add in our buttermilk. That's another thing that you can switch out. Uh, you can switch out just a small portion of it or all of it for something like pumpkin puree or applesauce or a banana or you know, whatever you want. Depending on the flavor of what you're adding in, you might wanna also adjust the baking soda. Buttermilk is, is uh, acidic, so it needs that baking soda to have a reaction. But if you're replacing it with something that's not acidic, you might wanna add more baking powder and take out the baking soda altogether. Or if it's lemon, maybe a little bit more baking soda and a little bit less baking powder. So that's where you're making your own recipe comes into play and you know you just kinda of have to, to mess with it to get exactly what you like. Now I'm gonna add in the rest of the flour and then we're gonna mix this until just combined. We don't wanna over mix it. All right, just barely have maybe a couple little flour specks in there and that's gonna be perfect. It's like making pancake batter. So one of the reasons you would make a baked donut instead of a fried donut, A, you don't have to fry any hot oil or anything like that, um, so it's a little bit safer, and B, let's say you have a huge gathering of people or maybe you're making donuts for a wedding and you don't wanna sit there and fry two donuts at a time, you can buy multiple pans, prep them all, bake them, glaze them, and it goes much faster. Just be aware that this is gonna have the consistency of more of like cake, and it's not gonna be that same crisp outer kind of donut like I make in my traditional cake donuts. It's still gonna be good, but it's not exactly the same. All right, we're gonna spoon all of this into a piping bag because I am a cake decorator, so I have piping bags nearby at all times. If you wanted to just use a spoon, that's totally okay. This has a few lumps in it and that is okay, I promise. Don't resist the urge to like over mix it until it's super, super smooth. 
All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of cake goop in my donut mold here. There's so many different kinds of donut molds you can use. There's silicone ones, you know, I, I just went with a regular metal pan that I found at Kitchen Caboodle. So <laughs> that's what I'm using. I'll put the link down in the description below of everything that I'm using and a lot of other baked donut factoids in the blog post. To make your own cake goop, it's just equal parts flour, vegetable shortening, and vegetable oil. Mix it till it's smooth, and it's like the best, super inexpensive, shelf stable pan release that you could ever use. So do yourself a favor. I had that recipe on sugargeekshow.com. All right, snip, snip. Okay, we're gonna fill that halfway full, two thirds of the way full. I'm like a chronic overfiller, so, you know, do as I say, not as I do. So this is enough batter to make 12 donuts. If you don't have two pans, then you can just set the other batter aside and, you know, use your second batch or invest in two cake pans. <laughs> I'm going to go upstairs to bake these. We don't have an oven in my studio kitchen yet, so I'll be right back. And exactly seven minutes later, we have finished donuts. Might take you a couple extra minutes depending on your oven or less, but mine was right on the money. So I'm gonna let these cool for maybe five minutes or so, flip them out onto the cooling rack, and then bake the second batch. To test for doneness, I literally just like, just like if it was a cupcake, I just touched the top and it springed back, so it was done. All right, cooling rack on top and flip. You could pick them up, I guess, like with your fingers, but I'm always worried I'm gonna like tear them. Ta-da! Beautiful little cake donuts. Okay, so while our donuts are cooling, we're gonna make our super simple glaze. It's just powdered sugar and a little bit of water, or you could use milk if you want. And the amount of water you're gonna use is really up to you. And I don't know why exactly. It seems like in different environments you need more or less water. Like some people are like, oh, I barely use any and it's like super watery. And then other people are like, I need more. It's like humidity maybe. I'm not even sure. But we just kind of, we want a thickish glaze and then we're going to color it pink and blue and we're going to add some fun sprinkles. Yeah, this is too thick. <laughs> I pre-sifted my powdered sugar just to avoid any lumps, especially since we're gonna be coloring this glaze. If you don't sift it, then those lumps will actually show up in the glaze and as a different color and it'll look lumpy. Literally add like a quarter of a teaspoon at a time because once you add too much water, it's really hard to take that water out. <laughs> so this is kind of like streaming off of my whisk here in a st steady line. It sits on top and then it slowly oozes down. So I'm, I'm thinking that's a good consistency. Nice and shiny. After your donuts are cooled, I'm just gonna put them on top of another sheet pan so that the glaze will drip into the sheet pan. All right, I'm gonna divide this glaze in half here, roughly. I guess I could have added the white first, but it doesn't really matter. A couple drops of white food coloring, and what that's gonna do is make this more opaque so it's not as see-through, and it's gonna make our color pop. You guys want your color to pop, right? <laughs> this is my favorite color of pink food coloring. It's Electric Pink by AmeriColor. Let's add a little drop. Pretty. I put two drops so that it's like a really bright fuchsia. In this case, you could use any type of food coloring that you want. You can use liquid food coloring, you can use airbrush, um, the Wilton kind, it's all gonna be fine. Just remember the more liquid it is, the more it's going to add liquid to your glaze. So, you know, keep that in mind. Don't wanna make it too thin. White, and then electric blue this time. This is like gender reveal cake donuts. <laughs> I didn't really realize I was doing that. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of leaf green because I want this to be more of a turquoisey color. I love it. All right, time for the fun part, the dipping. I'm gonna use the, the smooth part to put the glaze on because then the glaze is gonna just look really pretty. And I'm only gonna just go on the top part of the donut. I'm not gonna try and like submerge the whole thing. Pick up carefully. Obviously you cannot do this with hot donuts. They would just snap. Look how pretty. Oh, I 
love how that looks. It looks so good. And then a pink one. Drip off for a couple seconds. Look at that, that looks gorgeous. If you um, are going to wait in between mixing your two glazes, make sure that you cover them with plastic wrap and it's like touching the surface because this glaze starts to develop a crust really quickly. You can even start, you know, like I could add poop, poop purple. <laughs> you could add purple food coloring to the, the pink glaze and make it like a different color. You can change the color of the blue if you want. We could marble them together. Just be creative. Oopsie. Oh, that looks cool. <laughs> okay, so before this sets up, you wanna go ahead and add sprinkles because they will start to get a little crust. See, this one's already not wanting to stick. Shut up, that's so stinking cute. It's like a, a Simpsons donut. <laughs> so I switched up my sprinkles for the second batch so you can use whatever sprinkles you want. Okay, look at these beauties. They look so good. I'm so excited to taste one of these. Oh, somebody heard me say donuts. <gasps> Look at that. What do you think of that? I love colorful donuts. Yeah? Ready? Cheers. One, two, three. Mmm. Oh. So mm. soft. That nutmeg definitely gives it that classic cake donut. It is incredibly soft, much softer than like the fried donuts. It literally just tastes like a piece of cake. If I had to make a bunch of donuts for something, this is the recipe I would use. You like these better or you like the fried donuts better? Both. I like both really good. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it, guys. That's how you make an easy baked cake donut with colored glaze frosting. I'm Liz Merrick, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Good job, Avalon. <laughs>